Morning folks, it's our first stretch uh, onto Namibia. Uh, this has uh, been a long time in the making and uh, safe to say I'm quite excited. Uh, we uh, drove for about eight hours uh, yesterday just to get to Karma, just a quick stopover. Uh, today we are on to Moan. Uh, we'll be uh, sleeping over at Setatunga Camp, haven't been, uh, and then on to Shakawi. Uh, also haven't been and then on to Namibia so I'll catch you on the flip side Karma Rhino Sanctuary is usually the beginning of an epic Botswana overlanding trip but today we're heading to Namibia I'm joined by Ed and Ryan again for this month-long expedition We'll be traveling to Namibia via central Botswana, into Namibia via the Caprivi, travel along the Kuneni River to Kuakuland, down to the Marian Fluss, visit Itosha, and return via central Namibia and western Botswana. This stretch of the journey isn't the most scenic, and we're trying to cover as many kilometers as possible to get to Namibia. It's a 1,500 kilometer trip just to get to the Mohemba border post. We arrived just in time for a stunning sunset in Mon. I don't recommend driving at night in Africa. Sitatunga is just outside of Mon. Uh, we had set the Tunga camp, but the drive was long. We left at 7 and we arrived at 7, so it was a good 12 hour day. Um, lots of interesting drivers on the road and lots and lots and lots and lots of livestock, so always be careful on Botswana roads. Uh, but yeah, happy to be here. Eh? How peaceful and quiet is it here? Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah, Sorry, boys. I don't know what happened. Turns out they just finished a motocross race, but the festivities quieted down a little later at least. Sidatunga is still the best stop over camp in Moen, in my opinion. We'll no doubt be back here again soon, and hopefully I can show you around a bit more. But this morning, it's time to hit the road again early. On our way to Shikawi this morning, I couldn't uh, show you much about uh, Sitatunga unfortunately because we uh, got here at night, uh, had a 12 hour drive uh, yesterday, so yeah, quite a tough drive. Um, another long drive to Shikawi today, the road apparently is really bad, uh, so we're probably looking at another sort of 6 hours, but we want to stop at Sedilo Hills if that's possible, so uh, I'll see you later. As reported, the road's not great, but we've seen worse. It's only a 360 km trip up the A35, but because of the current road conditions, this can take up to 4 to 5 hours to complete. Watch for wide shoulder sections. This is usually a good indication that it's time to leave the tarmac. takes a good six hours with stops to reach Shakawi River Lodge. The lodge is around 20 minutes away from Shakawi town and you'll find it easily with Tracks for Africa. What a welcome sight after such a long drive. The lodge is located right on the banks of the Okavango River and the views are stunning. We soon set up at camp after some lunch. 
We've reached uh, Shikawi River Lodge after another long day's drive. Um, the Shikawi Road is really bad. It's uh, very potholed and a lot of sections you have to actually get off the tar because there's so many potholes you have to drive on the, the shoulder. But not bad, so some tough drives getting into Namibia from South Africa, uh, especially if you're going to northern Namibia. Um, Shikawi River Lodge, really, really, really nice campsite. A number of campsites have great river views. The sites are pretty spacious and there's lots of shade. Each site has a braai, electrical outlet, bin and water tap. The ablutions are great. They feature flushing toilets and hot water showers. There's also a scullery for washing up. The lodge itself is quite luxurious. There is a restaurant with in and outdoor dining areas and a lounge. There's also a very nice boma with fire pit as well as a swimming pool with a great view of the river. Yet another amazing African sunset to end of the day. Try and get more of those, those, those us in situation shots. Stunning campsite. Bird life is. It's great sleeping and waking up right next to the river. Going for a boat ride a little later on. Uh, quite looking forward to that. Uh, uh, really, really nice campsite, as I said. Uh, they've got very nice facilities at the lodge as well. Uh, if you don't want to camp, there's some really nice chalets, there's a swimming pool, there's a restaurant, there's Wi-Fi, so a nice break from bush camping. The best way to explore the area is undoubtedly by boat. Boat rides can be booked at the lodge. Your guide will show you kilometers of amazing riverfront scenery. You can also expect to see great bird life in the reeds and on the shore. Shikawi is one of the few places where you can still find the Pals fishing hole, as well as many other species like these African skimmers. This area is great for fishing as well, especially tiger fish. This was definitely one of the best afternoons of this trip. We've had an amazing two days at Chikawi River Lodge and I can highly recommend it. Today though, we're entering Namibia. We're entering through the Mahemba border post and then taking the B8 to Rundu where we'll restock and find camp. Chakawi is also our last fuel stop in Botswana. It's a short 20 minute drive to the border post. We soon through the border and on Babuatra National Park's dirt roads. We're thinking of staying here or Nambua on our way back.
we soon hit the B8. It's surprisingly busy for a rural area. We're starting to see a lot more overlanding traffic now as well. We reach Rundu some four hours later where we restock on meat, fresh produce and wood. We've only pre-booked Itosha for this trip so we find other camps through recommendations, Tracks for Africa and Iowalander. We're staying at Taranga Safari Lodge tonight. Hello. Hello. We were supposed to stay here for two nights, but the campsites are a little tight and no river views. Considering this and the fact we'd like to get to the Kaikafeld, we decide to push on. We uh, made it to Rundu yesterday, yes, late yesterday afternoon. We had to uh, stock up and we stayed one evening at uh, Taranga Safari Lodge. Uh, I can't really show you much because it was late and it's another early morning. We are on our way to Umbalantu uh, Baobab Tree Campsite, which is sort of halfway between here and Upupa Falls, a uh, six hour drive, so another tough one and then another six hour drive tomorrow, so no shortage of driving here. It's a six hour drive to our next fuel stop and camp near Ruakana. We found Umbalantu Bobab camp on iOverlander, but there's very little info on it. I'm afraid this 580 kilometer stretch of the C45 is not very scenic. There are some nice sections, but most of it's surprisingly populated. Turns out Ombalantu is smack in the middle of town, so we quickly find an alternative, Okapika camp near Ruakana. Yeah, it's quite a quirky place. Um, it's, it's well run. It's a community camp, obviously, and they, you can see they actually care and they really look after the place. Um, it is a bit strange. We're effectively camping in a crawl, but uh, it's quite nice. We had barking geckos just now. We had some guinea fowl, uh, but then you've got goats and donkeys, obviously, as well. Uh, but yeah. The days are starting to blur together. Early mornings, late nights, and lots and lots of driving. We're up early again, but there's a renewed sense of excitement as it looks like we're finally hitting dirt today. I always plan our routes beforehand, but it's also good to get local advice as well. We've had a few conflicting reports on which roads to take to Ipupa though. We decide to stick to the D3700 after refueling at Ruakana as we've had it with tarmac. Tracks for Africa estimates 3 hours to cover the 160 kilometers. Our next fuel stop is some 900 kilometers away in Puros, so we're filling up extra. Chris looks like he's fighting. <laughs> And coming in at the end. Fuel is not available everywhere in Kaaka land, so research fuel stops along your route beforehand. I do offer route planning assistance for top tier patrons as well if you need some help. How's the driving been? Uh, it's been tough. Um, the, the actual road surfaces are really nice uh, compared to other places we've been. Um, you have to be careful for a lot of uh, livestock, obviously. Uh, the driving is a bit so-so, so, -so, so uh, it's, it's tough driving in that sense, and it's lots and lots of kilometers. Uh, we've done, what, 3,000 kilometers since we started. 
Um, yeah, so lots and lots of driving to, to get to the north of Namibia from South Africa. Are you looking forward to Krakowfell? Yes, I am. Uh, it's, the road we've been traveling is, is albeit rural, is, is very uh, populated. It's not very scenic. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to see some scenery. This area is looking a lot more promising. We're excited to finally see the start of the dirt road in the distance. traveling all along the Kuneni River and border with Angola. scenery is surreal. Contrary to what we've been told, the roads are in pretty good condition as well. We do take some of the 4x4 offshoots to get closer to the river as well. Definitely take a moment to pause next to the river. Incidentally, our entire route is available to download as a GPX file on Patreon. This is the most beautiful place where reality seems completely unreal. A desert oasis. The moment you veer off from the river, it's like being on another planet. The kilometers are rolling by as we go deeper and deeper into the desert. This is a very unforgiving place, but at the same time, it feels amazing to be here. In the words of Louis Lemoore, you can't fight the desert, you have to ride with it. We reach Apupa after around 4 hours of amazing desert scenery. The falls is the first thing you see from the Apupa viewpoint. It's an awesome sight. We set up camp. It's very windy, but that does at least bring some relief from the immense heat. We camped right on the edge of the Kuneni and the view is stunning. Time for a quick meal and then it's off to bed. It's been a few tough days of driving. We've reached uh, Ipupa Falls, uh, quite a nice drive actually, a uh, very nice gravel road, 
uh, all along the Kanemi River. Uh, we were told the road's really bad, but it was actually pretty good. Um, some small 4x4 sections which you can get onto. Um, it was quite rocky, but very nice around the Kanemi River. Um, we're staying at the Morunga uh, campsite. There's uh, three campsites here the Kupa Community uh, Campsite, Kupa Falls Lodge, I think, campsite, and then Umarunga. Uh, all really nice on the river, and you can actually see the, the falls. Falls are spectacular. Have a look at this. Kaneni River is truly a vein of life in this otherwise desolate place. The falls themselves might not be as massive as Vic Falls or the Hrabis, but what it lacks in stature it makes up for in mesmerizing beauty. The word Ipupa means foam in Herero, referring to the foam created by the falling water. Rushing water surrounded by red cliffs and ancient baobabs. Jagged rocks and fine spray with the non stop roar of falling water. This place is amazing. Umaringa's campsites are fairly commercial, and you're a bit on top of your neighbor, to be honest. It has really good shade though, and some of the sites have great river views. Sites have power, a braai, bins and a water tap. Ah, Chris, good move on grabbing the camera. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Clever fella. Very clear. At Van Sales, I'm grabbing the camera. <laughs> yeah, me too. There's also a restaurant and bar with a nice river view. The pool is also a heaven sent in this heat. All the camps are in walking distance from the waterfalls. It's a great experience getting right up to the falls. It's not the easiest place to get to and it can get a little touristy, but I'd still recommend Ipupa Falls as a must visit place in the Koaku Land. Just left uh, Umarunga, uh, I was really impressed with Ipupa Falls, uh, it's a really beautiful area and uh, the trip up to here uh, has been really nice down the Kuneni River. Uh, we're on to Fonsales Pass today. I'm a little nervous about that to be honest. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, the campsite was pretty good. Uh, has all the amenities you want. There's actually quite a few campsites next to each other. It's very sort of similar. Uh, but the Umarunga is pretty good. It's uh, one of the Kondwana collection campsites. Uh, so you have a Kondwana card, you can actually get a discount for that uh, either as a Namibian citizen or a uh, SADC citizen as well. So uh, on to for sales pass, uh, we're having a look at the community campsite, see what that looks like. Depending on time, we might go through uh, the actual pass uh, to the halfway mark. And then uh, on from there, probably the marble camp, uh, the Hartman Valley, uh, and then on to Puros. See you there. We've left Ipupa Falls early as it's going to be yet another long day's drive.
We're heading south down the C43 or D3700 towards Von Sales Pass and then the Murray Influence. Trucks for Africa is estimating that it's going to take 7 hours to do 207 kilometers. The roads are pretty good for the first few kilometers. It's a very scenic route, but the roads are getting pretty bad right now. It started to get a bit rough now. Uh, it was good all the way from Epupa for about 80 k's and now it's gotten, gotten rough, so we're about to let down tyres. Yeah. Very nice. I like the fact that you go from a big track down to a two-spoor and it looks like we've left the villages and uh, yeah, looks like there's some exciting stuff coming up. That is an understatement. I usually air down to around 2 bar on gravel roads and 1.5 bar when it gets tough. We use in deflate to air up or down two tyres simultaneously. It's getting fairly technical now, to the point where you actually need a spotter. Tire placement is really important as there are some really nasty sharp rocks. You definitely should not attempt this route without a 4x4 with good ground clearance and low range. This section is particularly tricky with a trailer, but luckily Ed's an old hand at towing. We do pick up a puncture with all these sharp rocks. And it's on the side wall just for added fun. We hit it patched for now and we're on our way again. It 
It's starting to get dark. It's been a long day already and we're tired, but this road just keeps delivering. We're now going up a section aptly named Heartbreak Hill. Finally, all at the top after about two hours. Yes, please! My oh, man, well done, Ed. I know you were scared, bro, but I had faith in you, my man. Well done, Eddie! My man, first land cruiser with an Echo 5 up Heartbreak Hill. Wow, what a day! What a day! Well done, Chris. Well done, Eddie. Thanks, boys. We made it. Group hug. Group hug. <laughs> Turns out, going down the other side is just as bad though. Chris wants to move. Yeah, that's better. It's truly another ball game entirely driving off road at night. Also doesn't help that it's 34 degrees Celsius even though it's already 8 p.m. We finally make it to camp around 9 p.m. It's yet another early morning as we still need to get through the infamous Von Sales Pass today. Came in really late at the Fonsales Pass uh, community campsite last night. 
took us 13 hours to do 65 kilometers. Um, we ended up on the D3707 for some reason and it turned out to be a very gnarly road. It's, uh, I think it's worse than Fonsales Pass to be honest. Uh, so we got in really late. Um, there's a few images of what the campsite looked like. The camps at Fonsales Pass Community Campsite are pretty nice bush camps. The ablutions are very basic, but do have hot water donkey boilers and flushing toilets. There just wasn't any water, unfortunately. Otherwise, the sights aren't bad. We're finally hitting Von Sales Pass today and hopefully ending up at Marble Camp. It's a 75 km drive. Easy, right? Von Sales Pass itself is only 15 km or 9 miles long and you have to drive it east to west downhill. It's not to be underestimated though as it's known as the toughest road in Namibia with steep gradients, sheer drops and nasty sharp rocks. Van Sales was built in 1965 and it took Ben Van Sal and 20 men four months to complete it by hand. It's not long before the fun starts. You need a high clearance for Y4 with low range and a spotter for a number of sections on this pass. Some of the off-camber angles are quite scary. There are quite a few sheer drops off the sides as well. Also meet a couple from Israel, Ben and Noah, who joins us for the rest of the pass. It was great meeting you guys. We are already seeing signs that things don't always go to plan on this road. We eventually reach the viewpoint though and the views of the Marion Fluss below are spectacular. Tempting as it might be to camp here, I don't recommend it unfortunately. We had at least one first-hand account of people being robbed while they camped here. 
It's also a late afternoon again, so we've got to get moving. We're heading for the last stretch now, and it turns out it's a doozy. Depending on the conditions, expect some rock backing on this section. My man Chris, how do you say it's nothing worse than we've done before? <laughs> That's bad. Not that bad. Is it? It's bad, Chris. My man is bad. There are also some clear signs over the edge that you need to be careful here. And he packs so many rocks, so let's go. Uh, this last stretch is probably the toughest of the lot. Uh, there's some gnarly corners, uh, slippery downslopes you have to navigate, and there's a, two cars that's rolled down here, so the threat's really real, right? So, but careful, slowly, spotter, should be okay. Uh, solid axle. Yeah. Solid axle for this stuff is right to work. With 
Noah driving down. We've all made it through this tough section. Um, again, I think just take it really slow and look at your spotter. Don't, because a lot of it you just can't see. Um, there's this one section where you're going around the corner. Um, it's really important to look at the spotter here because you can literally go down the other side. Uh, your vehicle needs to be in good order for you to do this trial. Bad brakes, that's, that's an ender. So. Stop there, Chris. The end's in sight. Well, almost. Chris, you're at the bottom, man. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I just tore my pants. <laughs> oh, man, that's the biggest problem you've got. Yeah, oh, man, I think I've torn ligaments in my knee, bro. I think that's the most walking I've done in years, eh? Do you feel like doing it tomorrow morning? Yeah, let's go. You know, that's the biggest lie I've ever heard. But good achievement, eh? Well done, my man. You made it. Well done, brother. We did it. We did it. How do you feel? Well done, Eddie. Well done. Thanks for the help, boys. Hey, my man, overlanding escape. Another one ticked. This was a very long day. It took around nine hours to do 12 kilometers. We're now entering the Marian Flus. This has to be one of the most scenic places I've ever seen. getting late and we still have a few kilometers to go. A noteworthy landmark here is Roydrum. I'll put a link in the description to a post explaining the historic significance.
I also make a bit of a navigational boo-boo here. That evening, things would start to go wrong. Good morning, we are at a uh, marble campsite. We had a very long day again yesterday. It took us about nine hours to complete uh, from sales parts. We also met some really nice people on the way, so they stuck with us all the way. And then we managed to get us on to Roy Drum Pass in the middle of the night. So we only got here about nine o'clock. Um, so another long day. Uh, we got some car trouble. Uh, so we're heading to Pyros. Um, there is a mechanic there and we also have to get fuel there in any case. Um, if you want fuel in this area, you have to arrange with a guy called Colin in Pyros uh, prior to getting there and then he'll arrange fuel. Let's go. Marble is a fairly nice campsite, one of the only ones in the area. We were lucky arriving this late to find one open campsite. The campsites are located along the mostly dry Kumup River bank. There wasn't any hot water last night unfortunately, but we were just too happy to find a camp spot for the night. We have a 130 km, 3.5 hour drive today to Puros. The roads in the area aren't that great and it doesn't have any power steering at the moment either. The drive is very scenic though and we're happy to be off the mountain passes for a change. We also find another lost man of the Karkerfeld. So nobody actually knows uh, who makes these. Um, they're all over the cracker fault. Uh, there's 27 of which I know. We've found two, two so far. Uh, really interesting. They're usually quite quirky. The guy who makes these obviously has a good sense of humor. Uh, there's usually a little plaque that uh, has a story to it as well. So it's, it's really funny. There are actually 37 known lost men at the moment. Travelers don't share their locations though, as it's great fun finding these yourself. Albeit the roads are still pretty corrugated, the scenery is absolutely spectacular. We're on the outskirts of Puros after around four hours. You have to cross the Harusib River to get to Puros. The roads change depending on prior flooding, so take GPS directions with a pinch of salt here.
Puros is the first fuel stop since Ruakana, some 500 kilometers ago. So we're fueling up here by Colin, uh, for the lack of a better business name, um, in this whole area, which is literally the only decent fuel you can get hold of. Uh, he's, uh, we'll put his number in the description below. Uh, you have to arrange to get fuel from man to come in here. Uh, they'll better get it at bulk from somewhere else, um, and then they dispense it here in Junikath. The next fuel stop is either Sesfontein or Palmwag, but availability here isn't guaranteed. We're staying at Omenia camp, not far from Puros. The camp is on the banks of the Haru Sip, and it's a pretty great spot. It's been a hectic few days, so we're just going to take it easy for a couple of days. It's great to be able to have a fire again and actually cook a proper meal as well. It's a welcome change of pace in this very scenic spot. After a great two day break, it's time to hit the road again early. Early morning out of Puros as we've got about a nine and a half hour drive to uh, Itosha. Uh, one thing is uh, very apparent about Namibia, the distances are long. Uh, we only have so much time obviously, so we can't uh, break all the uh, trips up into different spots. Um, the Omenye campsite, uh, quite nice, uh, very basic but uh, quite alright, uh, very scenic. Uh, the roads to Sesfontein is horrible. See you in the Tosha. We're heading down to Sesfontein and Palmbach, restocking at Kamanyap and then on to Tosha, a 585km, 9.5 hour drive. These are the Kiribis Plains. This place is simply breathtaking. Thank you. 
haven't seen one other car yet, but the roads haven't improved any though. Around Sesfontein, there's a little more civilization again. We eventually come to the Pollenbach Veterinary Fence Checkpoint. You can't take any raw meat out of the red zone and vehicles are searched here. We are now on the Grootbach Pass. It's really scenic here as well. The 100 series has developed another problem though. There's a crack in the radiator. It's able to seal it though with hard soap at first. It develops an even bigger crack at the bottom though, so it's done for. I'm hooking Ed's trailer and Ryan will have to tow Ed. Up the Grootbach Pass using no fuel. And this is why. We decide to head to the nearest camp to regroup. We're still 344 kilometers away from Itosha. We're at uh, Hoidar camp uh, in between Pollenbach and Kamenjab. We've had to tow Ed's car here. Um, it's an automatic so you can't really tow it faster than 10 kilometers an hour and not uh, for long stretches. So we just wanted to get it off the Grootbach Pass. Um, to get it here so we can have a mechanic come have a look at it from Kamanjab. Um, very nice area. Um, we'll see what the campsites looks like. Uh, so yeah, not a bad stop over. The campsites are nicely tucked in between granite outcrops. We're tired and fairly stressed, so this is a welcome stop over. Over the next day or two, we'll make a plan to sort out the 100 series. In the meanwhile, it's great to have a nice place to sleep and some hot showers. We're leaving the 100 series here for now. A mechanic from Kamanyap will come and install a new radiator and then we'll come back to fetch it again. I just left uh, Wada camp. We're on our way to Kamanjap to refuel and restock. Uh, and then on to Tosha. Um, campsite's nice, the area is really nice. Uh, the staff's very friendly, Bob was spectacular. Uh, the place does need some maintenance. Um, so I think it's a little bit pricey for 300 Namibian dollars per person per night, but otherwise nice place. Really looking forward to uh, uh, Itosha to see some wildlife. As for the first half of this trip, I think I've seen a few springbok and a giraffe or two. That's it. So uh, see you in Itosha. It's around a three hour drive still and we're stopping at Kamanyap. Then we're off to Okukuyu camp in Itosha. 
I had some challenges uh, actually booking uh, the Tosha, not the easiest process, I must admit. And uh, because of the delays uh, we now had with uh, its car problems, I mean, your car can't drive, uh, we tried to push out the dates and uh, they just wouldn't have it. Um, apparently, they can move it out one day and then you forfeit the rest. So, uh, we'll see when we get there. Uh, we've now lost a day or whatever you. So I'm not exactly impressed with that, neither was I with the attitude I got from the reservation staff. Been a rough few days, but spirits are still high. Didn't have much luck restocking in coming up, so we'll have to buy provisions inside Atosha. An expensive exercise. Checking in, um, we do have a bit of a problem with our booking, so we'll see if we can sort that out. We had to delay, obviously. I couldn't sort out the billing area for now, but we finally at camp, and just happy to be here. There's also quite the storm brewing. Great to have some rain in this heat. We're just taking it easy tonight. We are excited to go on our first game drive tomorrow morning though. Fairly busy at camp and we're excited to head out. The roads aren't great, but as far as game drives go, this place doesn't disappoint. Ukukuyu is a very traditional camp. Shade is limited and it gets very busy at night.
I'd say the nicest camps are those furthest away from the ablutions. I also found that the ablutions are often overwhelmed by large groups. All the shared facilities were quite dirty and in need of maintenance. In the five days we were here, the rubbish bins weren't emptied once. The bathrooms also need cleaning and maintenance. The camp does have some friendly locals though. One of the redeeming features of this camp is the water hole. This is accessible 24-7. Albeit busy at times, the game viewing here can be amazing. Chris, what's happening, my man? So, uh, making the infamous uh, Katemba poiki again. Uh, we didn't get food poisoning last time, so hopefully, two's a charm. So Ryan's never had it, so we'll <laughs> see. Well, yeah, there's a first time for everything, right? <laughs> my so. man, when he says food poisoning, I get scared. <laughs> did you come right with the cans this time, Chris? I did, eh? No, no issues. So, clearly, there was a, a problem with. Uh, those previous two, no issues this time. You didn't have to force your way open. Yeah, fortunately not for the rest of the campsite. Oh yeah. That'll do the trick. Oh man, it's good stuff. We just left uh, Okukuyu, uh, we had four nights stay and I'm happy to report I managed to get a refund for the difference uh, between SADC rates and the incorrect international rates they charged me. Um, we are off to Halali camp which will be uh, staying out for two nights and then out of the park. These roads are awful. Uh, the game viewing has been good. So uh, once we've settled in the gap, uh, we'll have a look uh, around the area as well. We just stopped here at a uh, fenced off area that's got sort of a picnic area and um, some toilets. The toilets are revolting. <laughs> I think these things have been cleaned in years. Uh, stench is unbearable. You have garbage bins here overflowing. Yeah, it's just a mess. Although sightings can get a little crowded, the game viewing on the way is still great.
Um, we've reached uh, Halali camp. Uh, it's only about 70 kilometers from Ukukuyu. But the roads are awful to the extent that I have just snapped two hinges on my bonnet. So yeah, these roads could really use a grader. Oh, well, that's not supposed to be like that. So the, I've managed to uh, sort out some new hinges at Toyota Tsumep, um, but in the interim I can't drive like this on the highway, so I've got a local mechanic coming this morning to weld it. Uh, let's see how that goes. Campsites are nice. Um, I actually prefer them to uh, Ukukuyu's. Uh, it's much larger, obviously, but uh, quite a few Mupani trees, so uh, some more shade. Uh, there's also a waterhole you can walk to. Um, quite a nice campsite. The bathrooms, on the other hand, are a different story. These here are filthy. NWR, come on, guys, just give these things a good clean and they need some maintenance. Like I mentioned though, I still prefer this camp over Ukukuyu. I snapped off my bonnet driving through a ditch. Welding them back on is the only option now. Little did I know there's another disaster lurking in the engine bay that would only strike later. Now we're going to the waterhole, see if there's any game down there. The Moringa waterhole is again the highlight of this camp. It's a quick walk from camp. I think the hammer is 8,000 because it's made out of plastic. The views here are amazing again. Ryan and Ed collected the 100 series in the interim, so today it's time to hit the road again. We are leaving Halali and uh, Itosha National Park this morning. Uh, yeah, we had to stay a day or two extra because we were waiting to see what's uh, happening with Ed's 100. Um, we've been unable to uh, source a steering rack either in Namibia or Botswana for that matter, so he's going to have to limp uh, the 100 back to SA. It's not ideal, but he could be waiting here in Namibia for up to 15 days uh, for a new steering rack. Not ideal. Uh, parts availability, even for Toyota, has been pretty atrocious in Namibia, I must say. Uh, my two broken uh, bonnet hinges, I could only find one uh, in the country, so I've welded uh, the two for the interim uh, just to get it to Tsumep, so we're on our way to Tsumep and then we've uh, had to cut uh, the rest of the trip short unfortunately, we'll not be able to do Caprivi because we've simply run out of time and thus budget um, so then we'll be on to Vintu, uh, then Krang in Botswana then Botswana Game Reserve in South Africa and to home. See you later. After some fixes in Tsumep, we'll be heading south to Vintuk. From there, we'll head east to the Betapos border post and Botswana. 
We'll then stay over at Kong and then back home to South Africa. We still have around 2,000 kilometers to go to get back home. Toyota Tsume soon have Ed and I back on the road with some temporary fixes. We're camping not far from Tumep for the night. Zuri camp outside Tumeb, nice little campsite, nice and quiet, bird life's amazing and we're just sipping our morning coffees because we're all tired. <laughs> we were tired yesterday uh, so we decided not to go through the Vintuk, stay here at night, recuperate, enjoy this place and yeah head to Vintuk today. What do you think of the, the campsite right? Yeah I think it's, it's probably the second best campsite that we've stayed at on this trip just in terms of look and feel. Uh, late last uh, yesterday afternoon with uh, Toyota, so they did a temporary fix for Ed uh, just to keep the steering pump lubricated so it doesn't seize and then cause damage to the motor. Uh, lots of thanks to Tumep Toyota, really did a good job there, uh, as well as uh, replacing one of my bonnet hinges. Uh, really nice people, great service. Um, we stayed uh, last night at Zuri Camp, just outside of Tsumeb. Really, really nice camp. Uh, I can highly recommend it. Next, on to Vintuk, where we'll spend one evening. morning we're crossing into Botswana through the Betapos border post. Our next stop is the Kalahari Rest Lodge near Kang. This is a very nice camp for a stopover and I highly recommend it. We are at the Kalahari Rest uh, Lodge campsite. Um, really nice stopover actually, it's uh, near Kang. So it's kind of in the middle of the uh, Betapos uh, border post and the Skilpatak border post. Um, really, really nice little place. Uh, I am staying here a day longer, unfortunately. Not because it's such a nice place, but uh, I nearly had a fire in my car last night. 
When the bonnet broke off, the secondary battery actually this broke loose as well and pinched the positive terminal there. wire. During a thunderstorm last night, this shorted with the negative terminal on the body and cooked the car's main wiring loom. Fortunately, in typical Toyota style, it still started, so I can at least drive it home. Besides all of this, still not a bad place to be though. Um, early morning start again, we've got about a 7-8 hour drive to uh, Johannesburg and that will be our last drive for this trip. Um, it's been a tough trip, um, but I've had some good fun, aside from the, all the car issues we've been having, uh, looking forward to getting back home. This was a very tough trip, but it was also an amazing journey at the same time. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series. Until next time, get out there.